This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Chemical reactions of glucose and fructose, two of the reactions we have already discussed and now we are starting with reduction. After finishing chemical reaction of glucose and fructose, we will see some distinguishing test uh, by which we can distinguish glucose and fructose and if time permits, we will also see details of different disaccharide structure and polysaccharide structure. Reduction. So reduction of glucose and fructose, obviously as we are uh, using the term reduction, it will be that uh, we have to use some reducing agent. Monosaccharides, how we can reduce them? So if we want to reduce them, we have to use the reducing agent such as sodium amalgam. Now sodium amalgam, how we represent it in this way? That is Na hyphen, then marker, that is Hg. So we can use sodium amalgam or it may be hydrogen under high pressure in the presence of some catalyst. So any of this reducing agent we can use. Reduction is because of presence of aldehyde or ketone group. So when it is glucose, it will be the presence of aldehyde group that is CHO. And if it is fructose, as we know, this is ketohexose, there will be presence of C double bond O. So when it is CHO, it will be reduced to primary alcohol CH2H and if it is keto it will be reduced to secondary alcohol which is CHOH. So on reduction we will get alcohol depending on aldehyde or ketone it may be one degree alcohol or two degree alcohol. So see here we have D glucose structure in presence of sodium amalgam this CHO group is converted to primary alcohol CH2H. So only this part of the molecule is changed but rest of the part of the molecule, there is no change. If you look carefully, you will see in this part, both sides, there is no change. So only the CHO group aldehyde, it is converted to CH2OH. Now, if it is fructose, now what happens? In case of fructose, the difference with D-glucose is only in this part. Just focus on the first two carbon of glucose and fructose. You will understand what is the difference between them. So in this case, now we have C double bond O. As there is C double bond O, not CHO, so now there will be mixture of two different types of product. One is known as sorbitol, another one is known as mannitol. What is the difference between sorbitol and mannitol and why we are getting two types of product? We have not obtained two types of product in case of glucose. Then we have obtained only sorbitol. But now we are getting another isomer of sorbitol, which is mannitol. So just focus on this part of this molecule. C double bond O, when it is reduced to CHOH, depending on position of H and OH, whether H is on the right hand side or left hand side, depending on that, you can get two different types of product. So that is why, because we are getting a new chiral center here, that is new chiral center is generated. So that is why two different possibilities are there. And the relationship between sorbitol and mannitol is that they are apimer. Because out of four chiral center in these two molecules, rest of the three chiral center in both the molecules, there is no difference. Only in one chiral center, which is this chiral center where I have um, given this red mark, only in that part there is change in the chiral center. So that is why their relationship is their epimer to each other. What is the defi uh, definition of epimer and one that we have discussed in the last class, right? So that is why now we are getting two different product. So it is because of the formation of new asymmetric carbon, which is carbon number two, that is C2. So this is carbon number two, where the new chiral center is generated. And that is why we are getting two different types of product. So this is all about reduction. The next reaction is osajone formation. Now what is osajone? Okay. So in this case, the reagent that we are going to use is phenyl hydrazine, which is pH NH NH2. When I'm saying hydrazine, it is actually NH2 NH2, or you can write it as N2 H4. If I write it in detail, it will be like this H2N single bond NH2. Now, when it is phenyl hydrazine, now it means one of this hydrogen now it is replaced by pH. So, this is the formula. So, this is very important reaction of reducing sugar. 
and remember it is for reducing sugar and what is reducing sugar details we will also discuss in another separate slide right now just uh, this much information is enough that when i'm saying reducing sugar that means there will be some reducing capacity for the sugar molecule or carbohydrate molecule so it may be any type of reducing sugar it may be monosaccharide or disaccharide monosaccharide means higher, further hydrolysis is not possible but disaccharide if you hydrolyze uh, do hydrolysis you will get two monosaccharides so that is why it is disaccharide both monosaccharide and disaccharide they can give this type of reaction but it has to be reducing in nature then only this reaction is possible and there must be some aldehyde group or ketone group which is actually uh, the reaction part that is in the whole molecule this is the actual region where the reaction will take place now we are treating this reducing sugar whether it is monosaccharide or disaccharide with ph nh nh2 and the product that we are getting is we will call it phenyl hydrazone now ph nh nh2 it is uh, that is a reagent which you can also use for any other normal aldehyde molecule or ketone molecule and the product that you get from that it is known as phenyl hydrazone that is a general term you can use now in this case also as we are getting the product from some aldehyde group or ketone group obviously in this case the aldehyde and ketone group is part of carbohydrate molecule because this chapter is uh, right now we are discussing carbohydrate but the general term you can use phenyl hydrazone which uh, term you can use when there is reaction between ph and h and h2 and any type of aldehyde group or ketone group now in this case ph and h and h2 the reagent that we are using it involves only two carbon atoms of the that is two carbon atoms of the carbohydrate molecule so here if we look at this picture the carbohydrate molecule that we have taken d glucose now in d glucose only you have to focus on this part of this molecule because only carbon number 1 and carbon number 2 that is the first two carbon they are actually taking place in uh, actually taking part in reaction rest of the molecule there is no change so if you look at the uh, right hand side you will see only this part there is some reaction going on rest of the part there is no change another important fact that you have to uh, here you have to be careful what is the mole ratio because based on that you can get question so when we have taken one carbohydrate molecule for one carbohydrate molecule you have to use three equivalent of ph nh nh2 though it is true that in the right hand side product you are seeing only two ph nh2 as if uh, they have taken part but see look at the by products the by products are nh3 ph nh2 which is nothing but aniline and water molecule that means the fate of the third ph nh nh2 is it will be converted to aniline and ammonia so the mole ratio of the carbohydrate at ph nh nh2 it is 1 is to 3 this is important information okay now the molecule finally that we get it has some crystal type of nature but depending on what type of carbohydrate or sugar molecule you have taken the shape of the crystal it may be different but they are yellow colored and also the time the reaction will take for product formation that may be also different so the time for formation of osajone that will differ for different types of uh, for various sugars okay now for fructose we get fructose azo so this reaction that you are seeing it is d glucose but if you have started with fructose as starting material the product you can call it fructose azo and there are some disaccharide for example maltose lactose their detailed structure we will also see in today's class if time permits uh, we will see it in the next class but what is disaccharide that in definition we know when you do hydrolysis you get two monosaccharide so maltose lactose they are examples of disaccharide so these two disaccharide they also exhibit this type of reaction but remember another disaccharide which is sucrose you will not get osajo so remember in the first line here it is mentioned it is only for reducing sugar okay so this is osajo formation the product uh, that is the name is osajo so that is why we call this reaction as osajo formation 
Now, some more information about this reaction is that glucose, you have already seen the product. And what about fructose? The product is known as fructosazone. Now, this is a structure of fructose. This is glucose. And we have here another monosaccharide, which is mannose. Now, the difference in these three monosaccharides is only in this part. See? In this part. In the part, there is no change. So, the first two carbon, if you focus, you can find some difference. Otherwise, there is no difference. Okay? And actually, mannose and glucose, if you see, only difference is this uh, position of this OH. And fructosazone, there is C double bottom, there is no CH. But the important part is only this portion is different for this three molecule. If you compare together, rest of the there is no change. Now, in the previous reaction, that is osazone formation, we have seen that only the first two carbon, uh, they, they are taking part in reaction, not the rest of the part. There is no change. So it means that if you do this reaction for these three molecules obviously the product will be same because it is all about the first two carbon rest of the part there is no change occurring right so that is why these two molecules they form identical osagen and the osagen is same structure that you have already seen for glucose because it has to be same right rest of the part there is no change so the reason is written here that the formation of osagen as it involves the first two carbon, that is carbon number one, carbon number two only. So that is the reason that glucose, mannose, and fructose they have identical configuration in the rest of the three carbon. I mean three, four, and five. In these three positions, there are no change. This is three, four. Okay, so that is the reason why they form same osage. Okay, so this is an important question and now we also know the answer for this question. Number fifth reaction. Reaction with dilute H2SO4 and HCl. So when glucose is treated either with dilute H2SO4 and HCl, then there is formation of a molecule which is known as 5 hydroxy methyl furfural in H M A hydroxy H methyl M furfural F. Now, what is furfural? Furfural is basically this molecule. This is the structure of furan, which is important heterocycle. And if you just put a CHO at this position, this molecule is furfural. Now, position number five. If there is any uh, hydroxy methyl group. See if I number the carbons, this is position number one, this is two, this is three, four, and five. Now, what is hydroxy methyl? We know methyl is CH3. But when I'm saying hydroxy methyl, that means one hydrogen of CH3 group will be replaced by OH. So now the group is CH2H. And CH2 will be present in the and this structure H this is the structure of HM or 5 So this is actually the product. But this is not the end product. It will be formed, but it is intermediate. So further, if you heat the reaction mixture, ultimate product is levulinic acid and formic acid. Obviously, we'll see the structure. But remember, this reaction, it is uh, also important for some other purpose because in the next slide, you will see, uh, we will discuss one test and also one more test, the basis of which is this reaction. Okay, so in that reaction also, the name you can also see here, Molly's test. In that reaction also, this HMF molecule that is actually uh, playing the main role. So this reaction is the basis of color test, which is known as Molly's test for sugar molecules. Here we have taken D glucose and in presence of acid, dilute acid obviously, it may be H2O4 or HCl. Glucose is changed to HMF. So see, the same structure I have already drawn in the upper part of this slide. Three water molecules are removed. Now, if you are not stopping this, that is, this is not the end of the process. If you are further heating it with two water molecules extra, because this is value to H2S for ACL. So they are present in the reaction medium. Now the heating structure will be broken. 
and you will get two product formic acid and levulinic acid levulinic acid the structure you can see it is ch3 co ch2 ch2 then co2 h okay so as it is mentioned this is the basis of the color test which is known as molis test so some information about molis state we have to know it is a chemical test that is this reaction i'm talking about which is used to check for the presence of carbohydrate in a given analyte so suppose you have any unknown sample you want to check whether it is carbohydrate or not then you can take help of this reaction now as uh, i have also mentioned this fact several times before that if you want to do any identification test, there must be some visible change. Now it may be color change or it may be evolution of some gas or sometimes any product having some specific smell. And in this case also you can see there is some change in color or some new color generation is there. So that just by looking at the reaction mixture, you can uh, draw the conclusion. Yes, carbohydrate is present. So same thing we can also do here. What have we do in this test? After formation of this HMF, the test involves the addition of moist reagent. So if you want to check whether the unknown sample you have, that is, we are calling it analyte, whether it is carbohydrate or not, we have to add moist reagent, which is nothing but alpha naphthol, which is naphthalene molecule at one position, that is OH, that is alpha naphthol in ethanol, which is solvent. You have to add it to the analyte. And obviously, to add few drops of concentrated H2O because if there is already water present in the medium and we are adding some acid, ultimately it will be a mixture of water and some few drops of H2O. It will be diluted, which is the condition for the reaction that you have already uh, you are seeing here. Okay, so you will take uh, the mixture molecular reagent. Uh, sorry. I should say molis reagent, which is alpha naphthol in presence of ethanol. You are adding it to the unknown sample and you are also adding some concentrated H2O. So if there is some color formation, so this is actually the reaction. Molis test, first there will be formation of HMF. And how it is found that you have already seen. Now you are adding the molis reagent, which is alpha naphthol. So molecule molecules actually will react with HMF and we are getting this type of structure ultimately it will be converted to purple colored dye now details of this structure you don't have to remember but what you have to remember that molis test there is generation of some purple colored dye because of this molis reagent okay this structure uh, is not important but important is what type of color generation is there and the most important fact is why you are doing this test? What is your purpose? So why we are doing this test? Because we want to check whether in the unknown sample there is carbohydrate molecule or not. Okay. So if you want to identify that, you can take the help of this test. Because ultimately there is some purple color dye formation. But if the sample is not containing carbohydrate, obviously this type of color generation you will not observe. So the formation of purple, purplish red ring and the point of contact between the H2SO4 because at the end you are adding few drops of H2SO4 to the mixture of analyte and molis reagent. Analyte means the sample that you have taken, you want, you are checking whether it is carbohydrate or not and the molis reagent. To this mixture, you are adding these few drops of H2SO4 and the, in the contact point, if there is some ring formation, the color is specific, purple or purplish red, like this. You can see in this picture. So it proves that uh, carbohydrate is present in the analyte, that is a sample. Okay. So this test is used for identification of carbohydrate molecule. Another important test. Now you can also say that this test, though they are Doing this test, while we are doing this test, the purpose is obviously different, but you will still see the use of HMF. Remember the molecule, furan derivative, 5-hydroxy, methyl, furfuran. Now this reaction, Selly one of test, it is used to differentiate between aldose and ketose. So the difference between these two is, in one case there is CHO group, 
in another case there is c double bond o okay that is the difference so it is not only uh, that is in the previous test uh, by doing the previous test you can prove whether carbohydrate molecule is present or not that is the purpose now for this test the purpose is to distinguish glucose and fructose that is i better i say to distinguish aldose and ketose and as we know that glucose is under this category fructose is under this category so obviously in general you can say that this reaction you are using to differentiate aldose and ketose but you can also say that you can use it for uh, to differentiate glucose or fructose okay because glucose is aldose fructose is ketose in this case the reagent that we are going to use is resorcinol which is a kind of phenol derivative you will obviously see the structure and concentrated hcl now how you will differentiate this suppose if the sample if it is ketose sugar now it will react with this reagent and it will form a deep cherry red color immediately this is important immediately first but if it is aldo sugar then also reaction will be there but now the color is very faint obviously deep red cherry color and pink pink color you can easily differentiate right and it also takes more time so these are the difference now what about sucrose though it is not monosaccharide it is disaccharide but it can also give positive taste why because though it is disaccharide but it is actually the combination of fructose and glucose right now as glucose can give cherry red color so obviously from sucrose also you can give you can get deep cherry uh, red color because if you look at the condition there is hcl and if there is water both are present so hydrolysis can take place and disaccharide structure it will break and you will get back the original monomer two monomer basically which is i mean to say monosaccharide those are fructose and glucose and among this glucose will give very immediate color which is deep cherry red color so that is why here sucrose also can give positive taste so here you can see this is a uh, five member ring this is actually uh, which structure this is fructose so here also you will uh, that molecule we have taken though not it is necessary here just we are trying to see that uh, that is detail structure uh, of the product that that is not so much important but the important fact that you have to remember this ones which is that is in which case you are getting deep color in which case you are getting paint color which one is giving immediate color generation which is taking some time these factors are most important so here we have taken this five member ring which is basically furanose fructose and in presence of acid this molecule which is nothing but uh, five hydroxy methyl uh, configure okay in presence of resorcinol this is actually resorcinol ultimately we are getting this large structure now the most important part is what type of color we actually see so see both are actually deep cherry color though this one is more intense and if it is aldose sorry what uh, ketose is giving deep cherry color okay that means if it is fructose and this is fructose i'm not writing just if i am i have written this fructose so it will give deep cherry color which is basically positive taste and another example is sucrose here also you will get deep cherry color so it is a little less intense but still it is deep uh, compared to obviously aldose but when it is aldose now you cannot say it is positive taste because it is very faint color and it takes a lot of time and the last one is control that means uh, blank reaction where there is no sample so that you can differentiate at least these two there is a little bit difference right so this is uh, always whenever we do any test mostly uh, blank test is also important blank test means there will be no sample you will simply add the reagent and in one test tube there will be sample so this is the important difference in these two cases it is positive but this aldose now it will take a lot of time and very light color will be generated okay so remember this test is used to differentiate aldose and ketose the first line that is important next another test barfoet test now what is the purpose of this test 
obviously we will come to that point but before that see that whatever reagent we are using here we are using copper 2 plus now these have also seen in case of uh, tollens reagent benedict's reagent right so same type of uh, sorry not tollens reagent felix and benedict in these two cases also we use copper 2 plus and copper 2 plus is reduced to copper plus 1 so same type of reagent more or less so this is a solution of cupric acetate cupric means pseudo plus acid means OCOCH3. You can write it in this way. OCOCH3 we write OAC equal to and acetic This is the PA we are using. But actual CO2 plus is the ion which is taking part in the reaction. In this case, if you take reducing monosaccharide, that means the monosaccharide which has reducing capacity will be oxidized by copper 2 plus in solution and they, it will form carboxylic acid that means it will itself oxidize to carboxylic acid and it will reduce co2 plus 2 co plus 1 there will be formation of copper 1 oxide that means co plus oxide which has specific color reddish precipitate which will be formed within three minutes so this is cupric ion q plus ion is co plus cupric means co plus D glucose it is converted to gluconic acid only changes in this part so the reaction it is just like a tolerance reaction that you see or failing solution similar type and q plus oxide red precipitate is formed okay now if it is reducing disaccharide reducing capacity is still present because that is the important factor but suppose if it is disaccharide they can undergo the same reaction, but they do so at a very slow rate. Okay. Why the slow rate? Because when it is disaccharide, first there, there should be hydrolysis. Then you are getting the monosaccharide. And then the monosaccharide is reacting with the reagent. So it will obviously take some time because one extra step is there, hydrolysis. So it must first be hydrolysis in acidic solution before actual reaction, before reacting with the H. So that is why longer time is needed, but reaction is possible. So this reaction is possible both for reducing monosaccharide or disaccharide. After the reaction occurs, thin red precipitate forms at the tubes, edges, and also water. So the last point, the difference in the precipitate appearance time in both cases, there will be precipitate. But the difference in time that it will take for formation, that is actually helping us to distinguish whether it is reducing monosaccharide or reducing disaccharide. Okay? So this is the significance of this bar for a test. What is the purpose of doing this test? It will give this red precipitate in both cases, whether you have used reducing monosaccharide or reducing disaccharide. It has to be reducing, but it may be mono or di. And in case of disaccharide, it will take more time. So that is why if it is taking more time, obviously now the conclusion is it is disaccharide. So see, before the reaction, it is there is no red precipitate, but after the reaction, there is this type of precipitate formation. Okay, at the tube's edge and obviously at the bottom. Fine. So now there will be uh, some question regarding the chemical reactions of glucose. Fructose reduces failing solution due to the presence of which group? Is it hydroxy group? That means which group? Is it aldehyde group? That is CHO. Is it ketone group? C double bond group. What is it alpha hydroxy ketone? Alpha hydroxy ketone means this one. Now there may be other bonds also, but alpha hydroxy. So with respect to C double bond dope, this position is alpha. Why do you have OH group? So that is why we are saying it alpha hydroxy ketone. So for which of these group fructose reduces failing solution? So failing solution is basically uh, it will give it will be positive. If there is 
CHO group on alpha hydroxy ketone group. So you can cancel ketone group and hydroxy group, right? Because simply presence of OH group and C double bond group will not serve the purpose. There must be aldehyde group or alpha hydroxy ketone group, any of these two. Now, reaction is done normally in basic media. Now in basic media, fructose can show this type of tautomers. So this is the structure of fructose. In fructose, there is no CHO group, but you have C double bond O. And tautomerization means here, suppose any of these two hydrogen, if you consider, if there is CH bond cleavage, CC bond formation, C double bond O, that will also be created. And now the position of this H is here. So now it is in diol. It is not, we are not calling it enol. Though it is ketoenol tautomerism because this is the OH which is newly formed. So if you consider only CC double bond and OH, obviously this is enol. But uh, we are calling it in diol because there is another which also. In the CC double bond, diol means 2 h bond. And then again, another tautomerization if it is taking place. Now, how it is taking place? So suppose if this OH bond is broken, there is C double bond to formation, the CC double bond is broken, and now this H is here. So now what we are getting, we are getting free aldehyde group. So through this tautomerization two times, we can get after isomerization because this is also wanted to isomerization. We are getting another isomer by this process. So that is it is isomerization. Finally, we are getting glucose because of which now tolerance test is positive and Felling's reagent test that is also positive. Okay. So this tautomerization it is possible because if you look at the initial structure, I mean to say the D fructose. Here we have presence of alpha hydroxy ketone. So this is C double bond O, this is alpha position. And in alpha position you have OH group. So that is why this type of, this type of molecule, tautomerization is possible and ultimately you can get CHO. Though the reaction is actually occurring from C, for CH, CHO group. But originally there is presence of alpha hydroxy ketone. That is why two types of tautomerization and finally, you are getting CHO and the reaction is positive. But the actual release, there is initially alpha hydroxy ketone. So that is why this should be the correct answer. And if you consider this structure, though this is the structure of nothing but D-glucose, and only this part, it is oxidized to C double bond uh, CO2H, that is carboxylic acid. And copper 2 plus, it is now converted to Cu plus. That means it has accepted electron. 2 plus 2 plus 1. It is reduced. And this is oxidized. So correct option is 4. Next question. Fructose and glucose. They can be distinguished by. There are four reagent mentioned or test. Seluanox test, Benedict's reagent, Felling's reagent, Barfoyd's reagent. Now, Benedict and Felling we already know, but these two we have just learned. That is what are their purpose. Now, we can obviously answer this question, right? So, one by one, we will see the options. If it is the first reagent, Seluanox reagent or Seluanox test, it is used, which helps us to distinguish between an aldose and ketose sugar. Now fructose is ketose, but glucose is aldose. So obviously this should be the correct option, right? And if you consider the next two reagent, that is Benedict's reagent or Felling's reagent, in both cases, uh, you can use them for detection of the presence of reducing sugar. Now both of them can give positive taste, whether you have taken uh, Felling's reagent you can also say failing test or Benedict test. In both cases, fructose and glucose, both of them will give positive tests. That is, Cu2 plus will be converted to Cu plus 1. But uh, if both of them are giving positive tests, then how we will distinguish which one is 
fructose which one is glucose so that is why these two reagent will not serve the purpose and what is the problem with the last one the last reagent is used for detection of the presence of monosaccharide now both of them are monosaccharide okay so this the purpose of doing barfoy states that is completely different our uh that is purpose is to distinguish between fructose and glucose that means we want to distinguish ketose which is fructose and aldose which is glucose so we have to use this reagent okay next question which one among the following chemical test is used to distinguish monosaccharide from disaccharide here again we have these two name which we have already used now you know what is the purpose of uh, doing uh, selenohanops test then barfoy's test now iodine test and tollens test now tollens test uh, that will be positive for both uh, not for both monosaccharide disaccharide i should say that is tollens test will be positive if it is having some reducing uh, nature right but it is simply saying it is not mentioned whether it is reducing or not reducing it is simply mentioning that we have to distinguish monosaccharide and disaccharide okay now obviously selenohanops test its purpose is completely different then iodine test tollens test tollens test also not possible iodine test is not at all and barfoy test now these you can use this test because just remember this slide here what we have mentioned the last point focus on this the difference in precipitate appearance time i'm talking about this point so if it is dye it will be taking more time but if it is monosaccharide it will be taking less time now among these four options obviously this is close to as that is we can choose it as answer so this should be the correct answer because rest of the reagent they cannot serve this purpose now we will uh, finishing all the chemical reactions of uh, glucose and fructose we will see what is reducing and non reducing sugar though we have used this term several times but uh, obviously uh, in a very simple way you can say reducing capacity if it is present it is reducing sugar if reducing capacity not present it is non reducing sugar but how we will know how we will uh, that is just looking at the structure you can predict yes this will be reducing or you can say no this will not be reduced you how you can say just looking at the structure that will try to learn here fine but before uh, starting the discussion reducing and non reducing we have to know what is hemi acetal or uh, acetal so hemi acetal you can see the first structure and it is formed from obviously if you have started from rcho so i have already mentioned it in previous classes so you have rcho molecule and two molecules of any alcohol suppose i am writing to r prime oh or simply roh then you will get acetal so these two part are coming from alcohol and uh, rcho that is forming this part but if you have taken only one alcohol molecule now one oh will still be there and there will be only one or so this part is coming from alcohol as you have taken only one mole that is one mole of rc aldehyde if you have taken one mole you will get hemiacetal so in hemiacetal one oh and one or group but if it is acetal sometimes it is also called ketal but the modern terminology is accepted terminology is acetal so better we use this term when it is two moles of alcohol for one mole of aldehyde then there will be no oh and the name is acetal so this is the difference one oh group one or that is the same carbon and they can remain in equilibrium with the original starting material which may be aldehyde or ketone in this case it is aldehyde because you can see one or one h but it may be both of them are r if it is ketone but there will be equilibrium between hemi acetal and the starting carbonyl compound it may be aldehyde or ketone and if if it is acetal then also uh sorry there will be no equilibrium okay so when it is hemi acetal you can go back to the original structure that is the starting material aldehyde or ketone but if there are two r groups attached to the same 
not in equilibrium with the alternator key two. So as if this structure is locked, equilibrium not possible. Okay. So this is all about hemiacetal and acetal. Now we will see that this type of hemiacetal and acetal formation is also possible in case of sugar molecule. But as in sugar molecule, mostly we will deal with the ring type of structure. So you will see that these two points are basically joined. Okay. Sorry, not these two points. I'm trying to say when we will apply the same type of structure in sugar molecule, as in sugar molecule, the alcohol part, that is the hydroxy OH, and the carbonyl part, whether it is aldehyde or keto, both are part of the same molecule. So they will be connected by some other groups. So now this OR, it will be connected to this R. Or if it is acid, then also this part will be connected like this. Okay. So now we will see hemiacetal and acetal in case of sugar molecule. Here we have taken D galactose. You can take any uh, other molecule, glucose or fructose. That is not important. You have recognized whether in this cyclic structure there is hemiacetal or acetal present or not. Now look at this right hand side part of the molecule. That I'm talking about this carbon. With this carbon, what are the groups attached? Obviously, H is attached, OH is attached. This side, there are some groups, and the other side, there is OR group present. So, this whole thing, it is actually the R group, but there is OR group, right? So, this carbon is hemiacetal because you can compare this structure with the previous structure that you have just seen. So I'm writing in analogous uh, orientation, O, R, then in this there is some R. And this part is connected, right? But it is same structure like hemiacetal. And see, there is some equilibrium sign. So as there is equilibrium possible, and mostly if you look at this arrow, the forward arrow it is longer, so it can remain in aldehyde structure for a long time, open chain aldehyde. So from hemiacetal, you can reach to the free aldehyde structure. Okay. And how it is possible? As if this OH bond is broken, then we see double bond formation and this carbon oxygen bond broken. So this H, it is now here. And you are getting a free OH and free CHO. Now this free CHO, it is aldehyde group. So this is actually reducing sugar because you are getting free aldehyde. Equilibrium is possible. So a sugar having a hemiacetal, it will be reducing sugar. Though it is not very strong reducing, it, it can reduce very weak oxidizing agent, such as phenyls or tolins. For example, already D-galactose, it is now you know it is reducing. But another example mentioned maltose and lactose. Though these two are Disaccharide, their structure we will also see probably in today's class or next class. But remember, this galactose, which is monosaccharide, maltose, lactose, disaccharide, they can all give uh, that is, they will be called reducing sugar because they all have one thing common, which is presence of hemiacetal. It may be disaccharide, it may be monosaccharide. You just have to look at the structure and uh, try to find out whether hemiacetal present or not. If it is present, it will be called reducing sugar. Now we will see this ex another example. This is also monosaccharide. It is D glucose. But this OH, it is now OR. Now you can compare this structure as if the carbon is attached to one H, one OR. This part is also just like OR. And this is as if a R, right? This part is connected. There is no OH group, right? This OH group I am not talking about. I am talking about OH which is attached to carbon like this. Okay. So as it is uh, methylated glucose, as if because one this OH you have already converted it to OME. So this is methyl glucoside 
that is OH is now OME as if it is derivative of some uh, some derivative of G glucose molecule. But as there is to hemiacetal, so if it is like that, whether this methyl glucoside will be called should be called reducing sugar or not, obviously it is not reducing, non-reducing. Another example is now this example is for disaccharide, though disaccharide we have not yet discussed. Yeah, the structure of disaccharide is not important. Just look at this structure. Left hand side you have six member ring, right hand side you have five member ring. But you have to recognize is there any hemiacetal group present or not? Or that is, if it is present, fine, it will be reducing. If it is not present, it will be non reducing. Now, this carbon, if you see, it is attached to one OR group. This is another R group. This is also OR, right? That means there is no OH. So that is the reason it will be acetal. Now, if you look at uh, that, is not, it is possible only for this carbon. Okay. So this is acetal. So this structure, it lacks any acetal functional. It is not if it is in cyclic form. And this type of equilibrium not possible. If it is not possible, how we will get the aldehyde structure? In this case, the OH bond can you can break and you can get some CH2. If you want to do the same, you have to break oxygen carbon bond, which is difficult. Such as H, H, you but oxygen it is low carbon bond, we cannot break in any nature. It is non reducing. A uh, hemi so a sugar as it will be non having a reducing reduce with oxidizing agent. Same definition of these are different. You cannot reduce it's same on but in this now it can example sucrose that is already seen. Another example is graphene. This is the after hydrosis gives three monosaccharide trisaccharide. But this is also an example of non reduce If you look at the structure detail. There is no free acetyl. Structure of rectus that is no free CH2 generation possible because there is no hemicytal. Finishing this. So, i reduce and non structure of. And in disaccharide. So, already so know the definition of disaccharide. You have seen that we have sucrose first, and duty also of disaccharide. That we have all the carbs in the first class, seeing the risk of carbohydrate. You have to do so three important factors to the lack. If you even if you too close to hydrogen glucose, glucose and fructose, it is a, so the that is a mono you get they are different. So that is why the disaccharide they are maltose. So they are sugars that is glucose that yield two molecules glucose, both are glucose monosaccharide. That is disaccharide. This reaction is usually called dilute acid. If it is occurring inside so the formula C and H is which is having N minus one. So see general for two N and uh, these are the structures. Monosaccharide, they are they are connected to each other by carbon bond, carbon oxygen, carbon in the, this V shape that but don't think it is something you don't this any carbon. No, this is not carbon. Actually, here ink is if you just think the monosaccharide hand side, the structure saccharide. In the left side, monosaccharide, the OH side monosaccharide below. So that is why in the right connected, the OH is when the two carbon and the OH oxygen. It is this way. Okay, obviously carbon. It is in this carbon oxygen bond. Here in this and 
each point in the right hand side also it is b that is why it is uh, drawn in a different way and also the same one these are the ones that is structure but now one by those the detailization and the more to be connected so when it by oxidized saccharide linkage that means carbon two monosaccharides will be side of linkage of linkage and this type of it is known as glycosamond by with the cohesion of anomalous saccharide it must be medical which is this form for one monosaccharide the oh that the anomalous it is not the original anomalous carbon in the open piece the newly generated way form generated which you can when the things how this so here is starting from sucrose glucose molecule is formed and fructose molecule now not just any glucose for the glucose look at this anomalous alpha that is alpha not just very current on the molecule in the air you have if the newly generated oh they with the oh and number one condition if which is the position one is being to the ring the glucose it is alpha d glucose and just uh, if you find the structure of glucose remember of we have discussed the structure of fructose there we have we have all uh, that is Already seen fructose phosphorus. There, there are beta. So in this case, cyclic structure. This one is alpha and one is. This is a newly generated OH at position number two because originally in open structure number two is it was another one is carbon and one water molecule which is completely different. So this part which now glycosidic linkage it may be two types. One is alpha, another one is beta. And how if each one is alpha and beta, it is not so easy to uh, predict. You just have to remember it because that depends on the stereochemistry. But stereochemistry in detail that is not part of the syllabus. So if you if we know the configuration at these two carbon where the connection is actually occurring, whether it is R configuration or S configuration, then only you can predict whether it is alpha or beta. So if it is same configuration, same stereochemistry, it will be alpha. If it is not same stereochemistry, it will be beta. So in this case, it is same. But details we cannot discuss as it is. It will be completely uh, different discussion and detail. But just remember, it is alpha glycosidic linkage. Now the new structure that is after connection of these two carbon or carbon oxygen carbon, this new structure that you are seeing that is a sucrose. Now mostly it is drawn in this way so that you can compare before the. linkage formation after the linkage formation you can compare the structure but mostly sucrose is drawn in this way not the structure you are seeing above so see if you want to move from this structure to this basically there is no change in the left hand side part that is in the glucose part i'm talking about this molecule part there is no such change but if you want to that is change the structure you just have to uh, change the orientation of this five membered okay so see this is carbon number 2 right so this is carbon number 2 this is carbon number 1 then carbon number 3 4 this is 5 and this is 6 okay so as if you just have to rotate this uh, ring structure then you can get this because mostly you will see and uh, the structure of sucrose in this fashion not in this way now some more information about uh, sucrose this sucrose is called 
invert sugar. Now, why it is called invert sugar? Remember, during the discussion of muta rotation, we have seen that whether you have pure alpha glucose or beta glucose, ultimately after muta rotation, this is the final specific rotation value. And here, remembering rather than remembering the value, the important thing that you should know is the sign. It is positive. And for sucrose, also the same thing, it is plus sign specific rotation. So that is why, because of the positive sign, glucose monosaccharide, dextrorotatory, sucrose disaccharide, that is also dextrorotatory. But we know sucrose is formed from glucose and fructose. So as if these two, initially these two are present, and in case of fructose, it is negative sign after mutual rotation. So it is liver rotatory. So one monomer is uh, positive. This is negative. And the final that you are getting, that is also uh, positive, right? So when, if you consider the diverse reaction, that is during hydrolysis. So now you are moving from sucrose to glucose and fructose. The reaction that you are seeing here, this is basically removal of water. But if you are moving from sucrose towards glucose and fructose, that is initial monomers, monosaccharide, so the sign is changed from positive, now you are getting one positive, one negative. So during the hydrolysis of sucrose, the optical rotation of the reaction mixture changes from dextro to levo. Okay, so that is the reason. Uh, sucrose is called in but sugar. So just remember this uh, information. There is a change of sign in the optical rotation value when you are doing hydrolysis. So that is the reason we are calling it in but sugar. So this is not the end of disaccharide. Only one structure we have seen. Maltose, lactose, these two are still there and also detailed structure of polysaccharide that we discuss in the next class. We are at the end of the session. Thank you for listening.